Leading at the final break of the first half, Hofstra provided a scare to the crowd here at Cameron Indoor, but trailing by five, Duke turned that deficit to a five-point lead going into the half and ran away in the final 20 minutes, 89-68. to 68. A 21-point win, capping a two-game stretch where Duke got the wheels back on the track, beating Charlotte over the weekend, and now winning at home, setting up the real litmus test ahead eight days from now. Madison Square Garden, the Blue Devils facing unbeaten and number six ranked Baylor. The Blue Devils themselves, of course, have a lot of talent. Preseason number two, 21st ranked in the country at the moment. But a little bit of soul searching has happened over the last few weeks. Duke had the losses on the road at Arkansas and Georgia Tech. The injury to Tyrese Proctor, obviously a big deal. And John Shire said after the game, what they've learned the last two is that this is the blueprint to success while Tyrese is not able to take the floor. And by the way, a quick postscript on that. Tyrese off the crutches, which we saw him on over the weekend, but John Shire says that he isn't really to do any, able to do anything explosive yet. Still a ways away, they wanna be careful with him. They wanna be cautious in bringing him back, the words from Shire. So without Tyrese, what is that blueprint that Shire has been talking about? Kyle Filipowski passing out of the post seems to be a big piece of it. He finished two assists shy of a triple-double, but there were some mixed results, a mixed bag of results, when he had seven of Duke's ten turnovers tonight as his teammates were ribbing him about after the game. Flip said that he wanted to stay in for the final two minutes, but Shire pointed to the seven turnovers as if to say, you had plenty of opportunities to get those ten assists tonight. Flip. 28 points, 12 rebounds, and eight assists. That's what they're going to need from him while Tyrese isn't able to play. Jeremy Roach, for the 19 points that he put up, the eight assists to zero turnovers, the ratio that most matters to the Blue Devils right now as they're without their starting point guard. Baylor's one of the best teams in college basketball. Duke's gonna go head to head with them eight days from now, and the last two games serve as confidence builder to see where they can be by the time they take the floor on December the 20th at MSG. If they win that game, well, that's the highest ranked team that Duke's played so far this year, not named Arizona, who won on this floor uh, the first week of the season. Duke had the win in Chicago against the Michigan State team that isn't as good as we thought they were going into the year. Arkansas would have been a big win on the road, not able to get it, Georgia Tech. So before ACC play starts, Duke's looking for a signature non-conference win, and Baylor would qualify as that. And there's just something special about the Blue Devils playing at Madison Square Garden, and they'll get that opportunity in just a little bit. Tonight, the Blue Devils avoided a scare, and they were able to show some things we haven't really seen, including what a point-forward type of offense can look like with Flip Filipowski um, sharing the basketball the way that he did. If he can eliminate the seven turnovers and... Uh, turn a few more of those into assists, then, as John Shire put it after the game, that's not something you can really stop when you talk about a seven-footer able to pass the ball that type of way. Again, your final count, Duke 89, Hofstra 68, the Blue Devils able to get it back on the tracks, and we have plenty to talk about on a Wednesday show, breaking it all down, 3 to 6 p.m. We hope you're with us with Duke head football coach Manny Diaz joining the show. We hope you're with us on WSJS.